Genre Historical Fiction Essential Question How can one person change the way you think? Read How a Librarian Opens Doors for Lewis in Alabama in 1951. Finding Lincoln by Anne Malaspina. Paintings by Colin Bootman. On his way home from school, Lewis walked past the main library. The door swung open, and Lewis could see an enormous room filled with books. Why, there must be a million books in there, maybe more. Lewis wished he could go inside and count them for himself. The books reminded Lewis that he had to write an essay on President Lincoln. But the library was for white people only just like the strawberry milkshakes at the drugstore lunch counter, the swings in the city park, and the best seats at the movie theater. It was 1951 in Alabama, and Lewis could play all his piano scales and roller skate backwards. Still, he couldn't borrow a book from the main library. How about some lemonade? asked Mama when Lewis got home. I'm not thirsty. He sat down, kicking his foot against the table leg. What's the matter? Lewis didn't feel like talking. He was thinking that Daddy always had books piled high by his bed. But he had read those books again and again. Now Daddy wanted a book on honeybees so he could learn how to keep beehives. If Mama was ever going to have fresh honey... Daddy needed to get inside that library, too. Maybe a little homework will cheer you up, teased Mama, as she let the biscuit dough rise for supper. That morning, Mrs. Yates had told Lewis's class about the Civil War. The North and the South went to battle over many things, including slavery. The southern farmers said they needed slaves to plant the tobacco and pick the cotton. President Lincoln wanted the slaves to be free. He dared to stand up for what he believed in, and that made a lot of people mad, said Mrs. Yates. Lewis raised his hand. Did President Lincoln shake things up when he was a boy? Mrs. Yates didn't know the answer. Why don't you find out and write us an essay? she said, giving him a book about Lincoln. But the book didn't say anything about young Abe. Now Lewis stared at his blank paper. I need to find a book about President Lincoln when he was a boy, he told Mama. I have an idea, Mama said. After the biscuits were baked, she took Lewis to the basement of their church. She and her friends had started a small library where people donated books they didn't want anymore. Lewis saw cookbooks, mysteries, and a book of maps, but no books about President Lincoln or honeybees. One day soon we'll be checking books out of the main library. Just you wait, Mama said on the way back home. Lewis didn't want to wait anymore, and he wasn't going to. The next day after school, Lewis stopped in front of the main library. Holding his breath, he climbed the wide steps and pushed open the door. Everywhere he looked, books were shelved high. Lewis didn't have time to count, but a million seemed about right. The library was also full of people. Every one of them turned to stare at Lewis. In the quiet room, Lewis's heart was beating as loud as a tin drum. He began walking to the front desk. He was so nervous that he bumped into a man's chair. Stop and check. Visualize. How does Lewis feel in the public library? Use the descriptions to visualize the events in the story. Watch where you're going, boy, said the man. Excuse me, mumbled Lewis. On the polished floor, his sneakers squeaked like an old rusty hinge. 
Two librarians sat at the desk, looking at him. Can't you read? said one, pointing at the whites only sign next to the door. Lewis's face burned like it did when he ran fast on a hot day in August. The second librarian put down the book she was holding. You'd better go home, she said, leading Lewis back to the door. As she gently pushed him outside, she whispered, Come back tomorrow, after five. Lewis didn't see how tomorrow would be any different. Still, Mrs. Yates was waiting for that essay. He had to go back. The next afternoon, Lewis told Mama he needed to run an errand. Before she could ask a question, he was off. He ran all the way to the library and up the front steps. It was after five o'clock. The door wouldn't budge when he pushed it. Just as Lewis turned to go, he heard a voice. Shh, come in quickly. The door cracked open, and the librarian from yesterday peeked out. Inside, the library was dark and quiet. Now, what book did you want? she asked. I need a book about President Lincoln when he was a boy. Follow me. Lewis followed her down one stack of books, then another. She stopped, moving her finger along a high shelf. Here it is. She pulled down a book. Her hand was shaking, like Lewis's insides. She could get in big trouble for helping him. She might have to pay a fine or even lose her job. Lewis read the cover. Abe Lincoln Grows Up by Carl Sandburg. She had found just the right book. Then Lewis thought of something. Don't I need a library card? Even Daddy and Mama couldn't get a library card. Staring down at his sneakers, Lewis wished he could disappear. The librarian was quiet for a moment. Then she tapped him on the shoulder. Come on, I'll give you a temporary one. You do live in town, don't you? Lewis raised his head. Yes, ma'am. The librarian didn't seem to mind shaking things up at all. Walking slowly down the street, Lewis looked at the book and his library card all the way home. Lewis burst in the kitchen door. He couldn't wait to tell everybody. When she heard what had happened, Mama threw up her hands in amazement. Daddy shook his head like he had when Lewis caught the catfish up at the lake last summer. Isn't that something, he kept saying. Mama put her arm around Lewis. I hope no one got in trouble. Daddy cleared his throat. Mama and I just want you to be careful. Stop and check. Visualize. How do Lewis's parents feel when Lewis comes home with the library book? Use the descriptions to visualize how they act. That night, Lewis and Daddy read about young Abe and his kindness to animals. Though he grew up in the wilderness, Abe didn't like to shoot game. When he saw his friends hurting a turtle, Abe refused to join in. He didn't care if he wasn't like the other boys. Abe also liked to have fun. Once he lifted a boy upside down so he could walk across the ceiling. Abe had to clean up the muddy footprints. Abe could swing an axe, drive a plow, and win a wrestling match with anyone he met. What he liked best was to read a book. Some people said he was lazy and thought too much. Abe was just in a hurry to learn everything he could. When Lewis sat down to write his essay, he filled up three whole pages. President Lincoln did what he thought was right, even when it shook people up, Lewis said at bedtime. Mama leaned to give him a hug. 
just like you, Lewis. Before Lewis fell asleep, he remembered something. The next time he went to the main library, he needed to find a book about honeybees for Daddy. Out of a million books, Lewis was sure he could find the perfect one. Stop and check. Reread. Why does Lewis's mother say, just like you, Lewis, and give Lewis a hug? Reread to find the answer. About the author and illustrator. Anne Malaspina was inspired to write by her fourth grade teacher. The teacher told students to write for five minutes without stopping. We could write anything at all as long as we kept our pencils moving for five minutes, says Anne. Anne's pencil has been moving ever since. She has written 17 nonfiction books for children. Several of them are about people who fought for their civil rights. Colin Bootman was born in Trinidad. The beauty and the culture of the island still inspire him. After moving to New York as a child, he discovered comic books. He loved the art in them. Colin is now the award-winning illustrator of 20 books for children. He wants young people to follow their own passions, too. Author's Purpose Why does the author tell a story about Lewis's problem? Respond to the text. Summarize. What are the important events in Finding Lincoln? Tell them in order. Use your cause and effect chart to help you summarize. Write. How do you know that both the librarian and Lewis are brave? Use these sentence frames to organize your text evidence. The author describes Lewis by... Then she says that the librarian is... This helps me understand how brave they are because... Make connections. How did the helpful librarian change the way Lewis thought? Who is a person who inspires people in our country today?